November 21, 1985, Mamelodi Massacre History. In July 1985, the PW Bota government imposed a state of emergency and sent troops to quell resistance in the townships. On the one hand, the government's attempts to control the townships through black local authorities were in tatters. On the other hand, the mass-based organizations were hit hard by the repression. Our leaders were either in detention, on trial, or in hiding. The UDF responded on two levels. First, to build on the ground democratic organizations of people's power. And second, to build a united front across all democratic organizations at a national level. In many townships, including our township Mamilodi, grassroots organizations began to build their own structures to look at the day-to-day -day running of our lives. We formed street and block committees, organized people's courts, and even put in place cleaner programs on the streets and built people's parks. The state, in turn, claimed that we were undermining government, as one activist later said. We were therefore feathering the aims of the ANC and the South Afri that of the South African Communist Party, that of overthrowing the state and replacing it with the organs of people's power. The army and the police were used to crush the street committees and people's courts, and even to tear down people's parks. Mamelodi means the mother of melodies, but during those times, this large African township east of Pretoria saw more conflict and violence than melody. To us as township residents, a turning point was the 21 November 1985 massacre, when police broke up our march, which was peaceful, which was attended by over 50,000 residents. Over 13 people were killed and hundreds injured. We, the marchers, led by the mothers of Mamilodi, were demanding to see the mayor, the then mayor, about a ban on weekend, funeral, the weekend funerals, the restriction of monas to 50 per funeral, lowering rents, and the withdrawal of troops from the township. The massacre changed relations between generations in Mamilodi. As a member of the youth organization, Mayo, we felt that the November 21, 1985 massacre proved to our parents that we were right about the police and the struggle. We were now participating together with our parents in the struggle. The formation of the United Democratic Front and its call for a boycott of the 1983 township elections opened the way for new political groupings in the township. Mayo made up mainly of ourselves as unemployed youth was formed in the same year. The Mamelodi Parents Association also emerged from the boycotts of the 1994. Both these organizations provided important organizational strength in Mamelodi. They gained momentum from popular reaction to the presence of the army in the township and the increased levels of violence following the declaration of the state of emergency. After the banning of the Congress of South African Students in August 1985, we became more active. In 1984, Mayo and the Mamelodi Parents Association members coordinated co campaigns with the Pretoria Regional Consumer Boycott and Stay Away Committees. Since the November shootings, other organizations emerged, such as the Mamelodi Relief Committee, which organized funerals, and a civic association, which was launched then. As well as formulating demands concerned with local issues in the township, these community organizations also vociferously articulated national demands through their affiliation to the United Democratic Front. A recent development was the emergence of street committees which participated in Operation Cleanup campaigns. The campaigns were first started by ourselves in June 1985 as members of Mayo and other youth activists who wanted to weed out criminals and hooligans using the political struggle for our own ends. After 21 November 1985 massacre, our cleanup campaign came to include garbage collection when the, the town council was believed to have stopped the service in response to the widespread rent increase, rent strike. Community organization services also included building of parks named after political symbols like Nelson Holihlahla Mandela, Solomon Galushi Mashangu, and so forth. Such new and construction, constructive forms of popular resistance were predominantly initiated and carried out by us as young activists. We saw ourselves as political watchdogs in the community. But 
we appear to be broadening our support base as older and more conservative members of the community became increasingly politicized by the police violence. The sounds of the South African Defense Force activity, gunshots, caspers, and police vans were everyday background noises for us as Mayo members. We refer to ourselves as activists and we call each other comrades. As you are aware, a comrade is a person who does and feels the same as oneself. A person who can be trusted, a loyal friend, a compatriot, a fellow fighter. An incident which took place in Mamilodi outside Pretoria on November 21st, 1985, was a tragic example of the attitude of the South African police force to their black compatriots, irrespective of whether the latter were bellicose black youth or peaceful parents using passive means to make our grievances known. Some police, if not most, it seemed actively sought confrontation and the opportunities to shoot. We saw them as not trying in any way and means to avoid incidents that caused injury and death. In the incident of our township, Mamilodi, thousands of women had arranged a mass to present a list of grievances to the then mayor, Mr. Bennett and Glassy, including prophetically one about the removal of white police and the army from the township. The march which proceeded in compliance with police requests ended in chaos and disaster with 13 people, including a three-month-old three, year, three -old baby, dead and more injured. However, after considering Mr. Saul's report and its affidavits, one could not help it but conclude that the police did not try to avoid the massacre of unarmed civilians. The assessment of us as Mamilodi residents was quite clear that the manner in which the police conducted themselves was provoking violence. Furthermore, their behavior was very likely to cause injury or death. Their choice of weapons was the first factor which led us to this conclusion about police behavior. The question of what weapons police used to disperse a crowd had already been thrown under the spotlight because of the massacre at Utenage that took place exactly eight months before our march on 21st November 1980, on the 21st November 1984. In that incident, 20 people were killed as a result of gunshot inflicted by police fire. As a result of gunshot inflicted by police fire, it led to a commission of inquiry chaired by the, the Justice Donald Kanemeyer. Its findings and recommendations were published in June 1985. There are clear simil similarities between what happened in Mamilodi on the said day and the report of the Kanemeyer Commission published in June 1985. For instance, the Internal Security Act No. 74 of 1982 provides that firearms or other weapons likely to cause bodily injury or death shall not be used to disperse a gathering until weapons less likely to cause such injury or death have been used. What exactly took place before the police started fi firing into the crowded Mamilodi is not certain. It is clear that tear gas fired by the police caused the crowd to flee in panic, and we had not expected police to conduct themselves in that sort or in that manner. As such, we started running away and they started shooting with weapons which have the propensity and the potential to cause injury, to cause injury or death. How many when in they had, if any at all, at all, before the tear gas was fired is also not clear. Furthermore, with regard to the weapons used, it is clear that since the march was openly planned on the Tuesday, and publicly arranged on the Wednesday, the police knew about it. They had time before the first day of the march to be properly equipped. As we proceeded marching, we were told by the police that we were allowed to sing. Then in the end, we were told that if we did not stop singing, we'd be shot. In the beginning, the police let us, you know, in the march. In the end, we were surrounded by army trucks on the ground while a helicopter hovered overhead. The police has had assured us that if we were no, if there were no incidents of stone throwing, etc., and if banners were not used, there would be no police retaliation. We assumed that if they kept their sight of the bagging, the police would keep theirs. As we were busy marching, we were therefore shocked when the police started firing. Subsequent to the massacre, Mr. Bennett and Glassy, the then mayor, mentioned at a press conference the next day that he had abandoned attempts to address the crowd 
on November 21, 1985 because the loud hailer the police offered him was defective and he could not be heard beyond the first few rows of the crowd. In the end, one is left with one suspicion. If the police were innocent, then why did they refuse to appoint a judicial, co co judicial commission to prove it? As my melodians, we therefore pay tribute to the following combatants who lost their lives on the 21st of November 1985. Mr. Sam Shumin Mr. Jerry Shikwani Mwatle, Ms. Beauty Toko Malaza, Ms. Miriam Tombana Millo, Ms. Sarah Raisi Wetefo, Ms. Salome Namgidi Mabena, Mr. Jacob Fulubi Masanabo, Mrs. Magdalene Matengum Lambo, Mrs. Elizabeth Wapelile Msiza, the three-month-old Ms. Trocian Dovu, Mr. Paulos Mavimbela, Mr. Jacob Dipuo Songo, and last but not least, Mr. Moses Bonzimutse. We salute your commitment, forthright rightness, and fearlessness. We pledge to be as dedicated as you were to the struggle for a better life for the people of our country, particularly the poor and the marginalized. The downtrodden masses of our country can only take an example from these traits you displayed in your lifetime. There is no one who can take away the grief your families and your loved ones went through. Even those of us whom you left behind are running in helter skelters. For in all of us, we were robbed of true doyance of our struggle. We will continue to honor your memories by staying true to the vision that guided all of you. We know for a fact that the greatest homage to we can pay to you is to work together for a peaceful and prosperous society based on the principles of justice and equity to which you dedicated your entire life to. Sleep well, leaders, and we hope that in time we will be able to accept that you are no more difficult as it is. May your activism propel us to continue to be guided by what you stood for. May your passing on bore many like you, especially in the prevailing political epoch in our country. Faith we well, Lona di nata meka loba, Lona di khata mela masi si sa kolwela toko loko ya Afrika boro. Roba langa khozo di fika nswe sa kolole seho. Le kwa le yanteng, re tsepa fa le tla dula le rokho pose ka khone re tla dula re tloka maele alone. Re ya khola gore re kile ra bana le monyetla wa go anya maungwa a botlhaletswa lona. Re go para masedi a bele lona mme a re bolokela me boya ya lona. In all of you we shall always trust and believe. In honor of this day we call on all the peace loving people of Mamelodi to support all activities hosted to honor these historic giants. We implore all Mamelodians never to forget these mighty giants, for this would be tantamount to erasing the history and legacy of Mamelodi. Rise to the occasions, Mamelodi, to the occasion, Mamelodians, for a clarion call has been made. We implore you to continue to hold on to the memories which we gathered as a result of this, the wanton killings that happened in our township in front of our eyes. And we should say, and we are saying it now, without any fear of contradiction, that this will never be allowed to happen again in our townships. We are not saying it simply because for the sake of it. We are saying it because each and every year when November 21 approaches, we are filled with memories which ideally we would prefer to have erased out of our mind. But we can't simply because that would be a travesty of justice and tantamount to selling out the legacy of Mamelodi. We therefore employ you, all Mamelodians, continue to remember and ensure that we deliberately keep this day in mind because this is an important day in the life of Mamelodi as a township and in the struggle for the national revolution in our country. Aluta continua. Pambe rine chumurenga. Pambe rine ondo. Viva the struggle of Mamelodians. Viva. Forward with the undying spirit of the Mamelodi massacre victims. Forward. We shall win at the end of the day. 
viva Mami Lodi Youth Organization, viva Mami Lodi Parents Association, viva the United Democratic Front, viva the Mass Democratic Movement, viva Mami Lodi, viva. We shall overcome. This message is brought to you on behalf of the 21 November 1985 Mami Lodi Massacre Task Team, consisting of all political community, civic, and fraternal organizations. I am Lolo Mujela, the messenger. I thank you all.